happen. Today I wanted to show you how to make a Mac OS KVM with GPU pass-through, similar to the uh, Windows one. And there's only a couple steps to this one. This is actually very much simplified by Mac OS Simple KVM on GitHub, and I'm going to be following the pass-through post guide for this one just to make things more intuitive. And the only thing that really matters for this one, as far as I can tell, is you need a NVIDIA GPU that's below, I believe, the 20 series. You need like a te like 10 series or below. And that'll only work up to Mac OS High Sierra. And if you have an AMD GPU that works for pass-through, then you should be able to get to uh, all the way up to Big Sur, the newest Mac OS. But because I'm using an NVIDIA GPU this time, I'm going to be doing just regular um, High Sierra. But this works pretty well, so I don't really mind it. So the first step is going to be getting QEMU, Python, Python pip, and Git. I'm assuming that you have most of these. You should have at this point already followed my GPU pass-through tutorial because we're going to be utilizing that for the second part, and I'm not going to go back over it. So first, let's make a directory somewhere. I'm on my second hard drive here, so I'm going to call this Hackintosh. And we can enter this directory, and we need to clone. I'll make this page bigger. We need to clone the macOS simple KVM repository right here. So we just grab that, clone it. And we can CD into it. And there's a couple scripts inside of here, but the one that we're interested in first is basic.sh, or is it, no, it's jumpstart.sh. Now, depending on what version you're planning on using, in my case, Hi Sierra, that's the only one that'll work for me. I'm gonna run dot slash jumpstart.sh dash dash hi Sierra and run that. So we finished cloning the repository, it only took a moment. And now we need to create the QEMU hard disk. This is just a standard QCOW2, so we're just gonna IMG create dash f qcow2 and we're going to follow their format and say it's mydisk.qcow2 because the uh, future steps of the guide are going to assume that this is what it's called make it whatever size you want i just stick with the standard 64 because i'm yet to actually do anything on these vms besides just set them up and test that everything works and now we need to add to the basic.sh script and this is the qemu script that will actually execute the VM. So we're going to go ahead and enter it with your favorite text editor. Of course, we're not doing any of this as sudo. And we're going to copy these two lines. And this is just standard QEMU stuff. So this first one is setting up, it's just kind of putting the disk in the VM. And this next one is saying that it's like a system disk. It's just kind of identifying it. We're just adding this new disk that we just created. Now we can run the VM with just basic.sh. We're going to run the QEMU script. And things only get easier, so at this point we're going to hit escape and type exit to get to the BIOS of this thing. And then there's a couple things we want to do here. First we go to device manager, we're going to go to the OVMF platform configuration and set the resolution to, to your native display's resolution. You can do this later, but I'm just going to get it out of the way for now. And now we're going to go to boot manager and we're going to select Mac OS X or maybe the hard disk. We have to find the Clover partition. Looks like we found it. Boot from the Mac OS base system. Tend to take a long time when it comes to their install. So if you click into the VM, the mouse tracking is going to be pretty poor for now, but we're going to go to the disk utility and we're going to select that 64 gigabyte disk we made. It might not be exact, but we're just going to select the disk. Click on erase. And we're going to title it something, so I'm just going to call it OSX. You can use the standard Mac OS journaled guide partition map and hit erase. There it goes. And once we've formatted this disk with Mac OS's file system, I guess it's called, we'll go to reinstall Mac OS. And we can continue through the standard install. This mouse tracking is very poor. It gets stuck at random points. You have to kind of jerk the mouse around. We're going to agree to their terms of service, but we're actually breaking it. <laughs> we're breaking it the second we accept it. Get up there. This mouse tracking is terrible. 
We're going to select this new 64 gigabyte disk. It's coming up as 68 gigabytes, but that's just because Mac. We're going to hit install and we're going to let this go. So I'll get back when this is finished installing. Now at this point, once OSX has finished installing, it should have done a boot loop and then just kind of load. But at this point, we're back at the Clover boot menu. So we're going to go to boot Mac OS from, and then the name of the disk, I named it OSX. We're going to let that boot up. And usually it's not as graceful as a uh, normal Mac system booting. All right, so here it goes. It's booted us into the welcome screen for Mac OS where we're going to finalize our install. So you can go ahead and scroll down to the United States or whatever country you're installing this from. Set your keyboard layout. Accept the privacy policy. You probably don't want to transfer anything. And you're going to want to not sign into your Apple ID or any iCloud stuff quite yet. We're going to have to skip that for now. You're going to have to, when you port this to Vert Manager, set up a new MAC address. And there's a couple of things that you have to do to make sure. I haven't got around to it on my main system, so I'm not sure exactly how to do it. But for the sake of it, don't do it right now. So go ahead and set a username and a password. And you just hit continue. This is a basic setup. This shouldn't really need any extra walking through until we get booted. You're probably going to want to customize settings. Make sure that you like disable your location settings. This is all preference stuff that you don't have to. We're going to get rid of as much analytics as possible. Not like uh, you're really getting rid of it all. So here we are finally booted into Mac OS X. So we're going to go ahead and do the standard keyboard layout stuff so I can identify that you're on like a Windows keyboard. And at this point we need to do two things. We need to get this into Vert Manager and we need to get the drivers. So we need to fix up the display. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the... I guess you can probably do Windows and Space to open up Spotlight Search. This might be easier. We're trying to avoid as much as possible graphical animations like this launch pad because we don't have the drivers yet. It can be really slow and buggy and crashy and freezy, but we're going to get that all sorted out. So we're going to go here and we're going to type in disk util list and we're going to find the EFI partition. It's either this one or it's this one, but in this case, we're going to guess that it's the the Linux file system one, the one that's associated with Linux because this is supposed to be like our special EFI. So we're going to sudo disk util mount disk 0s1 zero, disk zero or whatever yours is labeled. Type in your sudo password. And at this point, okay, I guess I can't, I can't uncapture the cursor. That's so frustrating. We're going to go to finder, head down to our EFI partition enter this EFI folder, we're going into Clover, and there's this config.plist file that we need to open with a text editor. We're looking for this screen resolution part where we're going to change this from 1280 by 720 to our native resolution, so in my case 2560 by 1440 will suffice. Go up here to File and save it. And now we can power down our virtual machine. We can power down Mac OS. We don't need to reopen Windows. So let's head back over to this display where when this finishes closing, and I'm gonna bring over this again. At this point, we're gonna go to the switching to Vert Manager section. This is pretty simple. We've already configured Vert Manager, so it's really just gonna be a process of grabbing the XML file and defining it. So let's go ahead and grab the generic XML. So we can go ahead and copy this. We're going to actually exit this directory and we're going to git clone it out here. And what we need to do with this is basically just copy it. So we're going to cp example, whatever, take osx.xml. Then we're going to rename it too. We're going to call it like osx, I'm going to call it video.xml. 
and we're going to head back into here where we're going to modify it. Actually, let's copy, let's full screen this so we can copy the directory leading up to macOS simple KVM. And we're going to take all the instances of your path. Oh, we've got to modify the name. Now oh, we'll do that later. Wait, no, we got to do that now. Uh, where is my cursor? Let's take this. We're going to modify the name. Because otherwise that can cause problems. And we're going to go to all the instances of your path. We're going to clear it out and paste our actual path. And we're just going to repeat this for the entirety of the file. There's only like seven instances, I believe. And now we can define it. There we go. We can close our terminal for now then. And we're going to open up a vert manager. And here's our now OSX video. And in here we have our XML file that we just modified. And what's important here is to first go to our network. And I'm going to pull up my other OSX so we have our reference. So this is the one that works. And we're going to convert this. So we're going to take this and we're going to turn it to our bridge. You need a bridge for this to work, which is why it wasn't working before. And we want to set the network type back to 8254, blah, blah, blah. We want that. That's part of it. And now it's time to get rid of all of the spice related stuff. So we're going to get rid of all of this. We're going to leave the USB keyboard and USB mouse because those are the only ones that work for Mac because it doesn't have any support for something like vert IO. Under CPU topology, we're going to go ahead and set it to, I'm going to say, give it eight cores and up here, give it eight cores. For memory, you can, you can change it in the GUI, so I'm going to say 16384 for 16 gigabytes of RAM. And now we're going to go ahead and add our graphics cards. So down here, there's one instance of the 1060. There's the other part of it. And now all that's left is finishing up any modifications that you want to make. So me personally, I like to go to the bottom. I usually copy these over. I like to pass through my pulse audio and set up evdev which we went over how to do last time so feel free to copy this part from your windows vm i'm just going to throw it into the top of this apply those changes this is looking good and we're going to give it a start 